Now we are going to build the blog, post, and category pages for the website. I'll start by creating a new page for our blog. After that, I'll add this page to the menu so it's accessible from the main navigation. Once the blog page is created, I'll enable Edit with Divi. Then I'll insert a layout, and for this one, I'll use the About Us layout from our library. When it's loaded, I'll remove all the sections except the top one. You could also just save the top section from another page and use that, but since removing the extra parts is quick, I'm doing it this way. Next, I'll add a new section and then choose Add from Library. From there, I'll select our blog section. Once that's loaded, I'll remove the subtitle and the H2 title since we don't need those for this page. Then I'll update the headings. I'll change About Us to Blog and change our team to News. We previously set the blog grid on the home page to show a maximum of three posts. To display more posts here, we can adjust that setting. Open the row settings, then the column settings. Under loop, you'll find the option for posts per page. I'll set this number to 12, which will give us four rows of three posts. Right now, we only have three posts, so nothing new will appear. But let's see what happens when there are more than 12 posts. In that case, we can add pagination so visitors can navigate between pages of posts. To do that, add a new row with a single column layout and place a pagination module inside it. Let's quickly style this so it's easier to see. I'll set the text color to black and the font weight to bold. Let's take a look at it on the front end. You might notice that the pagination currently says single service instead of showing next or previous. This happens because we built our blog layout using the loop builder and the pagination isn't yet linked to that loop. To fix this, open the pagination module, go to the content tab and under target loop, choose column. Our blog loop sits inside the column. So this links it correctly. You'll see the text change to next. But when you save and reload the front end, you'll probably notice that the pagination does not appear. That's because we set the posts per page to 12, but we only have three posts in total, so there's no second page to paginate to. To demonstrate how it works, I'll temporarily set posts per page to two. Save the page and refresh the front end. Now you can see the pagination links, and when I click them, the other post loads correctly. However, you might notice another issue. The layout changes between pages. The first page shows a two-column layout, and the second page switches to one-column layout. Let's fix that. Open the row settings, then the column settings. Go to the Design tab, and under Sizing, set the column class to one-third. Save your changes and refresh the page. Now the layout stays consistent across pages and the pagination still works correctly. I'll set the posts per page back to 12, but now you know exactly how pagination works with the loop builder. When we open one of our blog posts right now, you'll see that it's using the default WordPress layout. Let's change that by creating a custom layout for our posts. Go to Divi, then to the theme builder. Here, we're going to create a new template specifically for our posts. Click Add New Template, then select Build New Template. Assign this template to All Posts and click Create Template. Once that's done, click Save Changes. Now click Add Custom Body and then select Build Custom Body. When asked, choose Pre-Made Layout and go to the Your Saved Layouts tab. I'll choose the About Us layout again. Once it's loaded, I'll remove all elements except the top bar. I'll also remove the title and subtitle, since we'll replace those with dynamic content. 
Now let's start building the post layout. Add a new module and choose the post title module. Under elements, disable show featured image and show author. Next, let's style the title. In the design tab, under title, set the color to white. For the font size, use our global H1 font size. Set the alignment to center and the font weight to bold. Then scroll down to the meta text settings. Set the color to white with 75% transparency and center the alignment as well. Next, add a new row with a one column layout. Inside this row, place another post title module. This time, disable both the title and meta options so that only the featured image is displayed. Then, set the border radius to 12 pixels for rounded corners. Below that, add a post content module. This will automatically pull in the main content from your posts. You'll see some placeholder content while editing, but on the front end, it will display the actual post text. Now, add another module under it. This will be the Comments module. Let's style this section a bit further. For the buttons, apply your global color, and for the hover state, use your global hover color. Make sure to switch back to desktop view after setting the hover color. Under border, set the border width to 0 pixels. In the button text section, set the color to black and the font size to 14 pixels. Disable the show button icon option. Then adjust the button padding, set the top and bottom padding to 10 pixels and the left and right padding to 20 pixels. For the fields text, set the color to black and the text size to 14 pixels. Now let's adjust the overall row styling. Open the row settings and under sizing, set the max width to 900 pixels. Under box shadow, choose preset one, then set the shadow strength to 35 pixels and the shadow color transparency to 10%. Add some spacing by setting 50 pixels of padding all around and a border radius of 12 pixels. Let's check the layout on mobile view. Here, I'll reduce the padding to 25 pixels all around so it looks balanced on smaller screens. Now we can save our work. Click Save and exit the builder. Then click Save Changes again in the Theme Builder. Go back to the front end, refresh one of your posts, and there it is, our custom post layout in action. Now we only need to create a category template for our post categories. To start, let's save our blog layout so we can reuse it for the category pages. Go to your blog page, and in the top bar, click on the Save to Library icon. Give your layout a name, and then click Save to Library. Next, go back to the Theme Builder. Click Add New Template, then Build New Template. Assign it to All Categories. You can also assign it to other archives, like the Archive or Author pages, if you want them to share the same layout. Then click Create Template, and after that, click Save Changes. Now click Add Custom Body, and choose Build Custom Body. When asked, import the blog layout from your saved layouts. Once it's loaded, remove the row with the extra text, since we don't need that for the category layout. Next, let's make sure the title automatically updates based on the category being viewed. Open the blog title module, click on the dynamic content icon, and choose post or archive title. This will display the current category name as the page title. Now, let's style it. 
In the Design tab, go to Text and set the color to white. Center the alignment, and for the text size, use your global H1 size. Then, set the font weight to bold. Above the title, we'll update the green subtext from News to Category, so visitors know what they're viewing. Next, open the row with the blog grid, and then open the column settings. Under Loop, set the query type to Posts for Current Page. This ensures that only posts from the specific category being viewed are displayed here. You won't see this update directly inside the builder, but it will display correctly on the front end. If you notice that your three-column layout suddenly changes to a 12-column layout inside the builder, don't worry, that's just a small glitch. It will look fine once published. Now, save your changes and exit the builder. Then click Save Changes again in the Theme Builder. Let's test it. Go to one of your blog posts and click on the Category link under the post. You'll be taken to the category page, and you'll see the title automatically showing the category name. For example, mine says Trends, which is the category for that post. Below that, you'll see all posts that belong to the same category. In my case, that's just one post for now. And that's it. Our category template is complete. In the next video, we'll continue by creating the contacts page.